You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. What did you learn about uh, Brian Kelly's squad this weekend when you were uh, in Tiger Stadium? Uh, that if Southern plays at LSU, it's going to take you two hours to go three miles. <laughs> Confirmed. Uh, that's true. I mean, good Lord. That was unbelievable. First off, the scene was just crazy good. Uh, obviously, halftime performance special. Uh, environment was just really cool. Great to see Southern get that opportunity, but... It took us an hour and 15 minutes to get there. It usually takes us 20 minutes. We stayed at the Hilton downtown. Oh! And it took, it took, us, it took us legit, legit two hours to get oh, home. Oh, man. Uh, that does and that not was, I mean, that me. was, you know, leaving a good 30 minutes after the game ended, yeah. if not 40 minutes after the game ended. And, I mean, we I, – I walked back to our truck to get more food for everybody twice. And I mm. came – like, walked – 50 yards and like 100 yards back in the car just had not moved each mm. time. So it was a fun game, fun atmosphere. Uh, I think the offensive line shakeup is going to be beneficial. I think Dellinger's got more of a guard mentality. Um, I think long-term that'll end up helping him out. I think Charles Turner, a guy that just kind of understands the position in its totality a little bit more. I think they get more physical with the new lineup that they have with Miles Fraser going to right tackle. Um, you know, Will Campbell, I, I was really surprised to hear the coaches say right now we think he's our best all-around offensive lineman hmm. um not because of anything that has to do with will it's just i i haven't heard anybody i don't think ever say a true freshman after two games or really after one game is our best all-around offensive lineman I mean, that's just tough to do in this league so it says a lot about him where he is and uh, what he's done so far um and i was really excited to see some of the stuff he did saturday night but i think that group gets uh a little bit a little bit better with with the new lineup the new shakeup. I was also learned just that the tempo is going to be very important for this team. Um, you know, talking to the world famous Jack Maruti before the game, mm -hmm. telling me that he keeps some some different sort of analysis and statistics. He said that Jaden Daniels was nine of nine in the first game when the play clock was at eighteen seconds or higher. So basically, saying that when they sped it up, he got more comfortable. He was more effective. And both Coach Denbrock and Coach Kelly told us we're going to be better if we go faster. We're going to be better when we use tempo. And so that's going to be a bigger part of who we are. I just didn't really expect to hear that about this team this year. So um, probably some of the bigger takeaways, you saw how, how Kayshawn got the ball a little bit early on. Uh, I think that obviously there was a little more emphasis there, you know, in, in kind of trying to keep him happy. And the defense, it's hard to really get a feel for because, you know, you're, you're kind of waiting on Fouché. Uh, you know, now you got Mason Smith out. Olajari didn't go in the first half. Um, so I, I think it's just like you're, you're kind of mixing and matching. You know, seven banks hadn't been out there yet. You're, there's all these positions that are kind of, you know, Ali Gay missed the first half. Olajari was out the whole game. So I, I don't really know what to make of the defense right now. It's a, it's a group that I had high expectations for week one, but because of the guys that are in, the guys that are out, the guys that are out a little bit, the guys that are going to be in the lineup at some point. I'm, I'm not really sure what to make of what that defense is going to be just yet. LSU has Mississippi State coming in, so it's obviously a different type of challenge. It's a week that I think kind of always makes everybody uneasy because of what that Mike Leach offense can be. How do you think LSU and State match up? There are parts of this that I really like for LSU. Um, Olajari, I think he'll be back. Uh, Ali Gay, obviously going to be there. Uh, you got some youngsters that I'm kind of anxious to see off the edge. If they get, I think they'll get some opportunities against a team like this and kind of see what they do. Like a Harold Perkins, if he's allowed to line up and just sort of rush the quarterback a little bit, he's a, he's a really natural bender and a guy who's like still learning every day. Um, so I think some of the guys up front could be a real problem for Mississippi State. I mean, they gave up some pressures against three playing Arizona last weekend. So. Mm. It's on tape that you can do it. And so you still have some guys on the back. Here's the one thing that I like about LSU week one. You didn't see much, um, enough of it in week two just because of kind of how the game went. But like three and five were flying to the football. Like super aggressive, not afraid to come down and play the run. And the one thing that people don't talk about that you have to do against Mississippi State is tackle. You've got to get guys to the ground. 
because it's going to be so many quick throws, so many screens, so many outlets, so many checkdowns that if you tackle well, you're going to make it a really long night for that group. But I'll say this, Will Rogers is really good, man. Like, he is not just a good air raid quarterback. He is a really good quarterback, period. He makes really good throws down the field. He's super accurate down the field. So they better get to him. Otherwise, I think it'll be a long night. And then offensively, you know, the, the, the way to beat Mississippi State when you're on offense is athleticism. So do not be surprised to see more quarterback runs implemented. Do not be surprised to see maybe some different players lined up in the backfield and try to take advantage of them on the perimeter because I think that's where you can get them. That's where they can be had. But they ain't going right at them. I'll tell you that. LSU will not go right at this Mississippi State defense. That's not happening. They're not good enough up front, and State's just filthy up front. Like, they're a – they're a. I'm trying to think of a way to say where people don't think that I'm, like, talking bad about them. But, like, when I say they're a dirty team, I don't mean, like, they play a dirty style of football. Like, I mean they play, like, the, t- the kind of football that a lot of guys don't like to play. Like, they'll do – the heavy lifting, the dirty work. They'll take on blocks, take on double teams. Like they're hard to move. They're not. They're going to fight you for the entire play. Like mm. they're just kind of a back alley defense. They don't run great, and like I said, not super great on the perimeter. But you don't want to fight them in a phone booth. So I think there's going to have to be numerous guys that are used in different ways to try and take advantage of this Mississippi State defense. The good news is you get them at home. I mean, what? Their game ended at like 2 a.m. Central. Yeah. So, you know, they had to fly home. So they're not getting home until like 8 o'clock in the morning, probably, after they get back to the bus and fly home. So you can just – Sunday is a wash. Like, it's just done. Like, I wouldn't even have tried to done anything on Sunday. So you're now you're down a day to prepare. Well, then you got to travel. So there's a travel day coming over to Baton Rouge. Um, I mean, I would not be surprised if Leeds pulled like a Tommy Tuberville and said, we're flying in there Saturday morning. Man. Like, we, we've hmm. got to just – chill out and rest as much as humanly possible. I don't think that worked out well for Tommy when he did that, <laughs> but um, I would not be surprised if you see something different schedule-wise because they've got to be really careful with their schedule this week. Uh, he is Cole Cube. Look at the SEC Network, Jocks FM uh, in the morning. Check uh, him and Greg McElroy's on Twitter at Cole Cube. Looking with us every single Monday here, courtesy of our friends over at Roosters Men's Grooming. With two locations in Baton Rouge, tell me what the Cole Cube looks special or the, uh, the Matt Moscone special either way. We appreciate you, man. Thanks as always. Always good stuff, man. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.